So a couple of weeks ago, Marnix made a video about how to get started in game dev. However, he was mainly focusing on the project management and all the other things that come with making a game. Today, we want to focus on the technical part because a couple of you guys reached out to us and asked, how do I actually get started in a technical way? So in this video, I'll be covering how I got started with programming, with uh, the technical side of, of making games, and I'll tell you how you should get started in my opinion. Now, who is this bloke sitting in front of a camera telling you how to learn to make games? My name is Thomas and I'm the lead programmer here at Bite Me Games and I've been making games since I was like 13 or so. Uh, so I do have quite a bit of experience in Unity. I never studied game dev in school, so I'm completely self-taught. However, I do have a software engineer degree, so it does help out. Long story short, you need to learn to program. There is no game without programming. Sorry 3D artist, you do have an important job, or 2D artist, whoever you are. You do have an important job, but without programmers, there is no game. You can make a game completely programmed with text-driven, for example, but you cannot make a game with just 3D models. So the most important skill is programming. There is a small little caveat though, because some engines do allow you to do other things, like make games without programming, but they just handle the, that part, so to say. So if you want to learn more about those, there is a game engine tier list that you can find on our channel. Right, is it left or right? Other side. There? There. There. Now, these engines are, in my opinion at least, great to get started, so you can learn some concepts of game development. However, if you truly want to make a great game, I would suggest that eventually go to a different engine because I do think you outgrow them. So, story time. How did I get started? Like, when I was 13, I was in school and we had to make a project. We could choose how we present something. It was from physics, I think. And I decided I want to make a game. So I made a third-person shooter. It was completely dog shit, but it was pretty terrible. However, it did spark something in me that made me want to make games. So how did I do this as a 13-year-old? Well, first of all, I copy-pasted a lot of code because I didn't know how to code. And I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials. And I do think these are a great way to at least get started. The one that I watched, like almost everyone that ever got started in, in game dev, if, is Brackies. Rip Brackies. But we do have a code monkey though, so those are some great tutorials. I also think the Unity documentation itself is actually quite decent, if you at least can handle a lot of text. So I just said programming is the most important part. However, I'm not going to start with telling you how you should program and how you should learn it, because it depends on your engine choice. We chose Unity and we use C-sharp. However, if you, for example, choose Godot, it's GDScript or C++ if uh, you go for the Unreal route. Once again, if you don't know what engine you should pick, there is a video that you can click right there, and it's the tier list video where we go through the ins and outs of every game engine that we know of, and, well, the, the advantages and disadvantages of them. If you already have experience, for example, you're a software engineer that knows C-sharp or Java, I do suggest you pick, for example, something that is pretty close at least, like Unity and C-sharp. This is something that makes the leap into game development quite a bit easier if you already know how to program. That's actually what we did. So you picked your engine. In this example, we're going to use Unity because that's what we use, but there are some terms and terminology you should basically know. For example, what is a game object? What are the life cycles of them? What is a rigid body? How do they work? Things like that are not programming specific because you also need to program, so to say, in engine. Later on, we will uh, give you an example of what we mean by this. So how do you actually learn how, do, how these engines work? We already mentioned the brackies and the code monkeys of this world, like the YouTube tutorials, basically. However, there are some other options. For example, paid courses are an option that you can explore if that's what you want. Then you at least have a consistent flow that you can follow. There are like courses where you make a specific game over these courses. So that's a great way to make a finished product, so to say. An extra advantage of these courses are, there are a lot of YouTube tutorials that say part two coming soon. And well, they posted that six years ago and I don't think it's coming anytime soon. If videos aren't your thing, another option is for example, reading books. This is a great way to learn new things as well. And there are books for like every Unity version basically. There are also books that are not engine specific, but just cover the thought process behind how certain patterns work. Like for example, how to use a flyweight pattern to improve performance. An advantage of books is they often are a lot more deep. They go into more details and you probably learn more. A disadvantage is most courses that we just talked about do get updated and well, a book doesn't. A book is also less interactive. So there's a lot more, well, pressure or 
responsibility on your shoulder to actually do it well. But just like in everything in life, you should do what fits best for you. Marnix, who is our, like, you know who Marnix is probably, but he's like the sales guy, the I make models guy, uh, things like that. He loves reading books. So that's probably his preferential way to learn. However, Jamie, who is more of a coder, he really loves the, the courses more than he does books. So I don't see him really read lots of books, but follow courses instead. Stick what works best for you. And since we're talking about reading, I already briefly mentioned the Unity documentation. This also works for Unreal and stuff like that. Just your engine documentation in general is also a great source if you want to learn more because they do often give you code examples or go into a little bit more detail and they link you through with certain parts on their webpage so you can learn more about certain topics in your engine. Another advantage is that it's free, so that's great, but it also gets updated, perfect Unity version at least. I also assume this is the same for Unreal. The downside is we already mentioned books are dense and not everyone likes them. Well, these documentation pages are a lot more dense even. Now, if you follow this channel for a little bit already, you probably know Forge Industry, which you can wishlist or buy. I don't know when this video is coming out, but go to Steam anyway. It's not the first game we ever attempted. We already briefly explored game development with what we call PCC. It's an internal code name, which was basically whatever indie game developer does at the start, trying to make an open world RPG. Don't do that. But there is, what is important here is that there's a big difference between what we did there and what we do in Forge Industry now. Because there is a lot of coding work that goes into Forge Industry. And by coding, I mean programming, writing lines of code. While if you make something like an RPG or a platform and things like that, you probably write less code, but work more in engine. What I mean by that is you make code, and you applied it in scenes, you'll make levels, things like that. Now, if you're just getting started, if you're a coder, I do recommend going to the, I make a lot of code, like the Forge industry. But if you are less code savvy, I do think making levels and things like that can greatly boost your productivity. So once again, like always, it's do what fits best for you and your game. A great example of this is, for example, in Forge industry, we procedurally generate all our worlds. We, have, uh, we do everything via, via code. We don't make levels, everything is done using code. While if you make, for example, a platformer once again, or like we mentioned, PCC, you make levels yourself. You do it manually to create handcrafted experiences and make sure that the player, well, sees whatever you want them to see. And this is another example of do what fits best for your skill set and for your game. Now, for the past however long this video is, I've been touting my own horn, saying programming is the most important thing in game development. However, it's, well, it's a building block. You have to have multiple building blocks to make a great game. For example, 3D modeling, 2D art, stuff like that is also pretty important, of course. But what I just explained with the courses, the books, the videos in general, all those things basically apply to 3D modeling as well. For example, Marnix was learning Blender when we were working on Forge Industry, this is also the same methodology he used to learn those things. So a brief summary for those who haven't been paying attention is pick your engine and your coding language. Find what works best for you to learn, be it videos, courses in general, books, just documentation, whatever suits you. Also think about what game you are making and if it fits your skill set. Think about do, we, do I do everything via code or do I ever, do everything in engine? And then in general, apply these things not only to programming but to 3d modeling to the art as well so you can broaden your skill sets and that about wraps up this video we will be making more technical videos in the future think about tutorials how you work with rigid bodies whatever so if that's something that you're fancying do make sure to subscribe we upload two times a week and marnix always says it's a win-win for both of us we get our number go up you get two videos a week so do make sure to like the video as well comment if you have any questions or thoughts and that's it. Thanks for watching and bye.